Oh. All right, everybody, welcome to episode three of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. That's what the show is. That's all the show is. It's not anything else. Well, it's a lot of tangents. Yes. Can I but tell you, though, how funny? Well, so I had this idea and I asked my friend Alex to do the show. And Alex is a busy man. He has a good job. He lives in a city that's worth living in. So there's stuff to see. <laughs> And he likes Billy Joel enough that he thought, all right, that would be worth some of my time. And we yeah. recorded the first one. And Lord, I found that fun. And then we did another one. And then I'm like, oh, I think we're just doing this. So as a third <laughs> episode. Yeah, the third one makes it real. That's exciting to me because I start a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that a lot. I start a lot of little projects. And some of them I do follow through on, I'm sure. But quite a lot of them, I go, eh. That yeah, was more fun to think about than do. Yep. A lot yeah. of sketch ideas where I'm like, oh, I could film that. I'm like, all right, I could just go to, get to dinner and get, then get a little drunk afterwards instead. Yeah, that's a good night. Yep. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. And I don't yeah, have to so I have the, that. I have the first five pages of a lot of screenplays. Oh, so yeah. You're like, oh, that was all I had. I thought I had a movie, but I had those five pages. And then I... I I fell off a cliff. <laughs> yeah, so I have a really yeah. short movie. <laughs> yeah. And then, then it becomes work. And you're like, oh, no, I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah, I have this one idea that's rolled around in my head for years. And I'm like, I'm going to. I'm like, I don't know if you're going to. I had one screenplay idea that had to do with uh, someone going into a coma in 1999. <laughs> this is how old this idea is. And being in like a 10-year coma and having to uh, adjust to life as a 40-year-old person uh, in 2010. <laughs> and I'm, I still occasionally be like, oh, I could do that. I'll just make the coma longer. And then I'm like, well, now it's to the point where I'm like, oh, I'm stretching what is physically possible <laughs> anymore. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, now the first half of the movie would have to be this person just like in re physical therapy trying to get enough muscle mass to stand up. I'm like, that's not <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Nobody yeah. wants that. My yeah. coma yeah. idea, I had a coma idea for a screenplay. And the idea was it was an action adventure, but the laws of physics didn't make a lot of sense in the world. And then periodically he'd hear voices and we'd slowly realize he's in a coma. Ah. That was my idea. And I that's also awesome. didn't write it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um yeah i put um an idea now i just like tweet the idea <laughs> that's fun enjoy it that way make up your own show and i'm there's all like, done yeah there should be a netflix show about the fake melania training camp oh yeah <laughs> that's so, really obviously good. they had to go through some uh, accreditation of some kind <laughs> uh, yeah she, she stands like this she talks like this and i figured there'd be a lot of infighting between the melanias yeah oh, be a fun show and then I was like, oh, i'm not going to write it so i'll just say the idea and into then, the world and, and then you can you, have your own show in your head have yourself a fun night and then go to dinner and get a little drunk that's right <laughs> uh, so uh we'll get this out of the way but this is painfully obvious got a reference behind me to a billy joel song uh -huh. uh, alex can you guess what it is <laughs> <laughs> it would, looks to me like uh, a cola war is going on. Yes. Um, which I think is the last uh, timely reference in We Didn't Start the Fire, which yeah. really puts a timestamp on it. Yeah, that's true. That song's odd in the, I, I know there's a reason from him. I don't, I've never heard the reason why he goes from important thing important thing to dumb thing, important thing to dumb thing. I, I, I'm sure there's a reason. Yeah. Uh, and actually, now that I think about it, well, that's pretty valid because that's what your life is made up of is stuff you should care about, stuff you care about too much. That's all <laughs> of life. And stuff you won't remember. There's plenty of that. Yeah. And stuff that seems important now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's good. I mean, he lucked out in a lot of ways stopping when he did. Um, it just is funny to me that he would have listed all these things and at some point he would have had to go 9-11 right. and follow it with something. Right. And then 
like, no, you get this off my radio. Yeah. 9 11, <laughs> that cute bear from the toilet paper commercial. <laughs> yeah. 9 11, Charmin bears. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Oh, 9 11, Charmin bears. There's a cartoon. <laughs> There's a cartoon. They're not going to write it. No. But here's the premise. I'll tell you the their conspiracy nuts, the Charmin Bears. That's the cartoon sure. premise. That's the show. Well, uh, so they're not. They live off the grid. That's why they're in the forest. It's not because they're bears. Nope. It's because they don't trust the government and they're they're crazy. And they're bears. <laughs> <laughs> That's the twist. Yeah. And uh, in w only one episode, just this kind of fan service, one of them goes, I'm crazier than the average bear. And we all laugh because you're so oh, yeah. and you're like, oh, that's I used to watch that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm noticing, if I may, that you changed your uh, your Zoom meeting name. I did. And I, I know why, which and it's very fun and it's making me laugh. <laughs> oh, good. OK, good. <laughs> yeah. So that, that, well, we might as well start the show since we're 10 or 15 minutes in. I oh, think I, that's what I was getting at. Nice. Good job. <laughs> so um, as somebody, if you're tuning in for the first time, well, that's weird that you watch the other two. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but our thing is uh, each of us are going to pick the song for the next week. This was my turn. And I picked the Ballad of Billy the Kid. <laughs> and... Uh, you know what? I really actually just like this song. The first thing I just want to say, and then I'm going to say, hand it to you to start off, but this song sounds like a steak commercial. <laughs> <laughs> huh. There's yeah, definitely a point where you get, ba, 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 ba. it's what's for dinner would fit perfect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's flawless. Or <laughs> the steak commercial people heard this song and they went, this would be perfect for oh, steaks. I don't know. Good. <laughs> but it feels like a state commercial for sure. <laughs> so yeah. uh, do we tell them what my name is or do you want to, why don't you start? What your little Zoom name is? Yeah. Yeah, you have uh, Pat Garrett as your uh, Zoom name. Um, who is, um, I got to remember the actual story now because I've been reading the lyrics. So I now know the errant <laughs> story of Billy the Kid. Yes. Uh, Pat Garrett was a sheriff. Yep. Uh, that sentenced or caught him or something. He wanted to kill Pat Garrett for whatever reason. He did. So Pat. Did he Garrett, kill him? Pat Garrett is credited in many stories with being the one who actually killed Billy the Kid. Oh. Pat Garrett is credited, but there's a. Um, so there's conflicting. In Billy Joel's defense, <laughs> <laughs> there are conflicting accounts regarding uh, Billy the Kid, how he died, if he died. There's that wild, wildly fringe theory that he lived for a very long time afterwards under a pseudonym in the um, uh, not William Bonnie, but another name altogether. And then he, uh, and then the, you know, you remember Young Guns? Sure. Young Guns was based on the premise that that story that he lived was true because you see an aged Billy the Kid trying to get a pardon so that he could, <laughs> yeah. That was oh. part, and he's talking to somebody oh, in like the 1940s or 50s, maybe the 40s. So he's a very old man at that point. But he doesn't, he wants a pardon so because he doesn't want to get hung for his crimes. So that's that My story. Goodness. But the general thought is that he got shot by Pat Garrett is, is accepted by a lot of people that Pat Garrett shot him. Right. Which is... And then wasn't there a movie a, a couple of years ago uh, with a different assassin in the title of the movie? And I can't remember what it was. Yes. Um, the, the Coward. If you look yeah. up Billy... Yeah. The coward who shot Billy the Kid. If you looked at him, you should find it. it was, that was I mean, part of the yeah. title. Yeah, it was like Jesse something. It's the assassination. It takes a long time to type this title. Billy the Kid by the Coward. <laughs> uh, and send. 
Assassination. Oh no, I'm wrong. The assassination of Jesse James. Oh, okay. Oh no. Yes. Well, we learned something tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see that coming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I, That's I, one of those tangents. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, now Billy, now Billy Joel needs to write a different song about how he was assassinated by a different guy and just get that wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, what are your first thoughts about our song, "The uh, Ballad of Billy the Kid"? Oh. <laughs> It's, I think it's really bad. Yeah. I think it's really bad. Um, the worst part uh, comes way down the line. I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, For, because, you know, yeah. his name is also Billy. Yes, that part is ridiculous. I'm able to resist <laughs> mentioning yeah. that in a really cloying turn. Yeah. That I'm sure like killed in like a Long Island piano bar. Yeah. When he yeah. was doing this song and uh, being poor and yeah. riding a motorcycle around Long Island, I'm sure the crowd went wild. That's so funny. Because yeah, that part is baskets of fried clams. That part is so unnecessary to the rest of the song. Thanks. It's 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 the opposite of my life where our first character plays a significant role. It's like in a movie <laughs> where in the last scene they introduce a guy and then the movie's over and you're like, why did you bring that guy out? Yeah, he could have stayed. Yeah, we didn't need that guy. Oh. Um, the first beginning of the song, the first thing that occurs to me is, uh, so from a town known as Wheeling, West Virginia, wrote a boy with a six gun in his hand and his daring life of crime made him a legend in his time, east and west of the Rio Grande. A lot of that's the wrong part of the country, which is amazing. It's really <laughs> far off too. Yeah. Also- I, mean, I think he must've been born in Wheeling, West Virginia. You wouldn't bring that up randomly. Oh, I don't But know. I don't think he left town armed. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm annoyed before that. Here's where oh, I'm annoyed. Go ahead. From a town known as Wheeling, West Virginia. Yeah, I was going to say that too. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> That's, it's not the town's nickname. Yeah. It's the name of the town. It, so it, if it, it was, was like a town known as the Big Apple, you'd yeah. be like, oh, the Big Apple, what's the real name of that town? And you go, oh, well, New York City. And people would go, oh, okay. So, but it's known as... <laughs> But Wheeling, <laughs> Wheeling, West Virginia would be a terrible nickname for a town. It would particularly be a bad nickname for Wheeling, West Virginia. You know, as far as the nicknames go, like yeah. when you, like if you nicknamed me James, you did not put a lot of effort in. That's <laughs> <laughs> <No>, true. <laughs> uh, he started with a bank. Um, I just wanted to fix that lyric. So I'm just going to fix that lyric. You ready? He started okay. with a Chinese laundry. That's apparently the first place Billy the Kid huh. called. Not okay. <laughs> you did some research, right? Into the yes. actual story. I did not. So I think you're going to take the lead on debunking a lot of this. Well, it's, I'm from Arizona. Well, you're from Arizona. Um, you went to rodeos at some point in your life, right? Yeah, once or twice. Did did you care a little bit about the Old West or was that not interesting to you? A little bit. I mean, I went to Tombstone and I watched, you know, the OK Corral shootout reenactment. Yeah. I went to Old Tucson a few times for their little gunfighter shows. And we had friends who were in that show. Oh, funny. So, that, yeah. And also, if you live there, you accidentally learn stuff about the Old West because that's all they want to talk about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there's then, not much, in, you know, there's maybe a burgeoning software industry now, but there wasn't much else going on. Yeah. It was like yeah. the old West happened, and then pause, and then IBM right. opened the thing. <laughs> and I think yeah. that's, and the university is there. The OK Corral is interesting in how tiny it is. That's the thing that's very jarring. You yeah. realize, oh, wow, these these dudes were next to each other when they were shooting at each other. 
it wasn't what you picture where you're in my mind in all the old west in you know any western there's a, such a distance between people when they're shooting no these guys came right up to each other and just started firing right i think yeah. the weapons were not made very well and you had to get pretty close to actually hit something yes and because of the gunpowder that was the other part that uh in is now accurate in movies but never used to be accurate because of the kind of gunpowder they had you fired and there was so much smoke that oh. in the next couple shots you were basically in fog and you couldn't <laughs> see anything at all so your chances of hitting stuff or it or also your chance of just hitting the wrong thing rose exponentially because wow. as people are moving around and now you don't know where the hell anybody is so that's <laughs> and uh you know the in the story of billy the kid too the first guy he kills uh legitimately was probably self-defense oh uh, also he still killed him and he was sure. afraid of being put on trial so he escaped and that's kind of what made him a criminal in the beginning was uh -huh. leaving and if he had stayed he might the have been he left the scene. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is true that he escaped jail a lot. And I have to imagine that's because jails were probably not very good. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was like getting out of the broom closet, probably. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, kick harder. Okay, <laughs> let's go. Oh, man. Kick the he door managed, hard. He managed to break these wooden bars. Yeah, <laughs> whatever it was. And even if they had metal bars, they were bars wedged in wood. They weren't bars in steel and right. mesh. And... Anyway, that's not what the show is about. Patience. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So why don't you keep going? Uh, we're, we're at, he started with a bank in Colorado, uh, which was next, I guess, to a Chinese laundry. Right. Uh, in the pocket of his vest, a colt he hid. <laughs> Again, I'm immediately annoyed by uh, like three different things. Yeah. A vest pocket, I don't know if vests were different, but a vest pocket is where you put maybe a pocket watch yeah. and a mint or a couple <laughs> of Advil. There's no room for a giant colt handgun. Yeah. A big and also get a holster. Yeah, you are stealing things anyway. Get a holster. Yes, you steal right? a holster. You're right. Um, so automatically wrong place to put a gun, and then uh, the inversion of the natural word order. Yeah, a cult he hid um, is as bad as a uh, tonic and gin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, it's young songwriter stupidity where they're like, oh, I can make a rhyme. I just have to crack the sentence in half and move this word to the wrong place. I'm like, just take 10 more minutes and work on it until it rhymes and doesn't sound <laughs> tortured. <laughs> so annoyed by that. Uh, so, okay. And, and his age and his size took the teller by surprise. Uh, well, we already know he's not what didn't wasn't really a bank. Yeah, um, I don't bank. think his size did his size really freak out the teller. <laughs> so Billy the Kid was young. That's that's part of the sure. story. Is pretty true, and he was kind of um, uh, tiny-ish, but just having been young. But again, if you're the teller, I think it's more. Oh, that guy's got a gun. No, I can't believe how yeah. short that guy is. That little kid has a giant gun in his vest. Yeah. What should I focus on? Well, first, I should tell him not to put his gun there. That's dumb. Yeah. yeah. And uh, where's your mother, kid? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there have been kids in the bank before. You couldn't have been that surprised. You need me to help you lift up that giant gun, you tiny man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, he never traveled heavy. Yes, he always rode alone. And he soon put older guns to shame. Hearsay. 
Yeah. I mean, did he? I guess he always wrote alone, but you wrote that, a few. No, no, that part's not entirely true because at one point, um, so at one point he uh, he was riding his horse and some Apaches stole his horse and they <laughs> abandoned him in more or less the desert and he had to walk home and he almost <laughs> died. But oh, luckily no. his friends took him in and nursed him back to health and gave him food and shelter. And he, had, he was gainfully employed sometimes as a rancher. Um, so okay. that part's just not, that part's very romanticized that he was just this ghostly figure. And I guess that part I don't mind as much if what we're doing is just telling a myth. Here's the problem. You're either you're telling me a, <laughs> either you're telling me a mythical story of a Western guy yep. or you're telling me about a real guy. But the details he's conflated are one or the other. They're not both. Do you know what I'm saying? Because parts of yeah. it sound like. Yes. Hey, he was tiny. Okay, that then you're not telling me a miss uh, a mythical character. You're letting me know this was a regular guy, but then he right. rode alone. He was a ghost in the wind, and then so he's not both of those things. Right. Also, it was but a tiny. Was right. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess it would be a terrible like old west myth to tell the story of a guy who had like his horse stolen <laughs> and yeah. had to walk back down uh and that like, would be a fun movie we'll never write but it really would is oh yeah just, just a like, really funny silly not even silly but just like here's the deal and you tell the story about right. this dumb kid <laughs> right and then maybe the, the second half of the movie is a dumb myth oh. growing Right, and him just being baffled by that. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? I almost died, though. Yeah, and I, and I took my damn horse. I like that horse. <laughs> uh, he never had a sweetheart, and he never had a home, but the cowboy and the rancher knew his name. In a way, I think that's maybe true-ish. Uh, I guess. He, I mean, there were posters. Huh? There were wanted posters, so I guess they knew him. Yeah, and he worked for some of them, so they knew him. Sure. Um, and I don't think he was a homeowner, so I think that's true. <laughs> Unlike characters from other songs. Yeah. Uh. yeah. Sold his house, closed his shop, shot up a bank. A different <laughs> or a Chinese laundry. Yeah. Uh, well, he robbed his way. This is weird. He robbed his way from Utah to Oklahoma. So now he's going backwards towards West Virginia again. Yeah. I don't know the accuracy of where he was robbing. Well, there should be a lot more Arizona in this. Ah. There just should yeah. be, yeah. As yeah, it no. often was. For If you were lawless, by the way, if you're a lawless cowboy, Arizona was a great place to be because so much of it remained unincorporated and it meant... If you were just getting away from people, there wasn't a lot of law to have to deal with. I mean, yes, you were also likely to get murdered by other people who knew that, but <laughs> oh well, true. It was, uh, yeah, it's sort of like the Wild West, yeah, kind of. Um, was. I'm looking up something because I wasn't sure if I should be annoyed or not, but okay, I'm good now. I was annoyed at first uh, with east or west of the Rio Grande. Yeah. Because it seemed to me that the Rio Grande mostly runs, runs east-west. <laughs> but it does go up through the middle of New Mexico. There you go. And, actually, well. and you know what? Actually, you know, for a lot of bandits, Mexico plays a key role in their survival. So that actually probably, even if it wasn't accurate, and that one probably is. Mexico was always a place to go hide. True. Just over the border, and you were pretty safe from the law just because you were suddenly in a different country. So that actually does play a role in a lot of criminal activity. In the no, United I think States. it was just the east or west that was bugging me. Yeah. Like north or south of the Rio Grande. 
Right. <laughs> but it, it does run north-south for a while there. And the law just could not seem to track him down. Well, obviously not true, because he apparently was in jail more than once. Yes, he was. And it served his legend well for the folks they'd love to tell about when Billy the Kid came to town. Now, that seems really true. I think that that's probably true. Yeah, I think. Uh, pop culture behavior. Yeah. Like, oh, ce celebrating criminals and people who get to do things we wish we could. Well, and, and we, have, we have jobs. Yeah. And referencing the uh, last episode of our show where you were talking about old folks who remember terrible New York romantically. Yes. It's mostly because it's over and you can remember <laughs> right. romantically. And remembering when a killer came to town is much nicer than having a killer come to town. Yeah. There's a lot less uh, talk about it when he's there. Yeah, there's the only talk is like, well, it's just, let's just wait yeah. and see what happens. I wonder if there was like merch. <laughs> <laughs> if there was like, and Billy the Kid was here. Stay at this uh, dollar, at this, uh, our little hotel for five cents a night. <laughs> I yeah. bet you there was. I know there were little books that people wrote, just garbage books, you know, yeah. that, you know, pulp, pulp fiction of the day. There right. were little tiny books that people wrote with little drawings of <laughs> Billy the Kid and stuff. I know that happened, which, and that happened for all the Old West guys, you know, that, you know, for Annie oh. Oakley and all, all of those guys, there'd be little books that, you, that people would sell. And then, of course, people being what they are, I don't know if you know this, but people could be kind of gullible with uh, false information. Huh. So. No modern examples handy. I wish I did. I sure do. Oh, uh, all right. But, uh, for next, next time. We'll have some for next time. Yeah, but for sure that used to happen. <laughs> and, <laughs> for sure. And there and there are little pamphlets and stuff and legends about um I think for real, like you'll see this in Western sometimes that some of the worst troublemakers were the people who came west hoping to become that. Because yeah. dumb agenda on their mind, not an open a shop. I'm gonna <laughs> right. do that. It was yeah, all I'm gonna conquer the frontier. And they're like, no, there's a lot of people out there who uh, don't have security systems. And yeah. uh, you go out there and make trouble and mm -hmm. live in the bushes. Because here in Wheeling, West Virginia, I can't get away with shit. No, I know it's no I know it's uh, known as Wheeling, West Virginia. Where was that really? <laughs> uh. I, I'm glad that bothered you because that bothered me too. Just known as Wheeling, West Virginia. That just, yeah. And I don't know. I couldn't, for some dumb reason, I couldn't put my finger on it. But you're right. It's not known as Wheeling, West Virginia. It's Wheeling, West Virginia. Yeah. Ro wrote it a boy with a, a thing that, that is was what known it is. as a six gun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh huh. Uh huh. Explain more. Well, they we used to call it a six gun, and the reason they did that was its nickname is because it was a six gun. Oh, okay. Huh. It served <laughs> as legend, legend well for the folks they'd love to tell about when Billy the Kid came to town. Um, now, I want to say, is that where the break happens? Y yes. Well, no, it's not the 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 break that makes me crazy. No. Okay, so it's after the next one, right? Now we're, yeah, we're getting more of uh, uh, incorrect <laughs> Billy the Kid information. Yeah. Well, I'll check with you. Yeah, and what? this one's wildly incorrect, and it's, uh, it's dumb in its own way aside from that. Well, one cold day, a posse captured Billy, and the judge said, and then here's where Billy Joel um, occupies the character of the judge. <laughs> yes, he does. He doesn't do it in a lot of his songs, but he does it here for sure because he goes, and the judge said, string him up for what he did. And then Billy's doing a little acting. Yeah, and yeah. Boys and their kin, like the sea, came pouring in to watch the hanging of Billy the Kid. Okay. Now, I'm sure people would have watched the hanging of Billy the Kid, but it was troubling because they often didn't hang guys who'd already been shot. <laughs> and there were no witnesses to the death of Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid 
went out a little bit like Osama bin Laden in the sense that he was holed up somewhere. Yes, he was holed up somewhere. He was shot and not a lot of people saw the body. And uh, as a result, uh, and it may have even been for the same logic in its day. I don't know. The same logic of like, this is going to be too much of a circus. I don't know. That's not what, what this is about. But the choice not to show his body is a complicated choice. Maybe it was the right choice, but all these legends about him still being alive, assuming he wasn't just actually still alive, um, <laughs> right. are given a little bit of credence by the lack of witnesses, the lack of seeing this thing happen. And I find sure. that that part... I don't blame Billy, Billy Joel, Billy the Joel. <laughs> I was about to say. Uh -huh. uh, can we start calling him that? He's Billy the Joel. Yeah. I would, you know, I'm afraid he would like it. Uh, I, then I, <laughs> since I like Billy Joel. Um, and I just want to take a, a little aside to say, all this criticism aside, when the song comes on, I listen to it because I don't, I sure. like it fine. Yeah. And I like sing, Billy Joel. I sing the fuck out of it. Yeah, it's right in the range. they're all right in my range because he didn't take care of his voice and his uh, range came down. Yes, <laughs> which is fantastic. Good job, Billy. You he yeah. made everything accessible to guys like us. He stayed out of shape. Um, <laughs> you so, know, um, he does do that thing where he is uh, the voice of the character sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's really bad and string him up, string him up for what he did. Uh, but he does it in big shot. Oh, yeah. That weird. He does like a weird Italian accent. I think it's supposed to be, a, you have to be a big shot. A DJ. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh. And may I say, just whenever we get to that song, I love that song. The song is great. Uh, it's a, I remember hearing it, and then it wasn't until 20 years later that I knew what the spoon up your nose meant. Oh, funny. Just, yeah. um, oh, what a weird thing for someone to do. No wonder he was annoyed by this person. What a weird party trick. <laughs> it's like a, a gym move. Oh, <laughs> put a spoon up my nose. I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is my new character. Okay. I literally just met you, Dick. Why are you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Spoonie. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Oh, now, do you remember the Barbara Streisand song? We have nothing to be guilty of. Do you remember that song from the 70s? Oh boy, yes. If I was a guy who knew, who was competent enough to make a mashup, I promise you, Big oh. Shot and that song would fit perfectly. Oh. We have nothing to be guilty of. And then you'd cut to, but you had to be a big shot. <laughs> it would fit perfect. <laughs> and the magic if of somebody it, watching this one. One of the 14 people who see this can do that. Yeah. We'll play that, it. The magic of it is it would appeal to no one. Yeah. We are good at those ideas. Because <laughs> you take your <laughs> big Streisand heads and your Billy Joel fans who happen to others. Oh, overlap. Boy, that's got to be tiny. <laughs> got to be tiny. I'm sure there's people who like both, but you got to be a maniac about both. Who are those yeah. Oh boy. Well, they, you know, they might be in New York if they're oh, anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, they right. might be on Long Island. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Babs is yeah. Babs is a New Yorker. Yeah. Who? Uh, I'll look around. Huh? I'll look around. I'll ask. Right. Them. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. <laughs> All right. So we're back. Let's see. Where were we? We were at. Um, uh, the cold cowboys day. and their kin, like the sea, came pouring in to watch the fictional hanging of William Bonney. Of William Bonney, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that just didn't happen. That's a very archetypal Western ending. Yeah. Uh, he's captured by a posse. They string him up. Everybody watches. And then credits. Um, but none of it happened that way. And again, it would not be a good song or a good story to tell it the way it actually happened. Wouldn't it though? Like if the song was about, I mean, if the song was about 
this is how we this is what we think happened yeah no you're probably right this complicated song that really explains it is probably <laughs> <laughs> yeah it becomes a, be like one cold day somebody shot him <laughs> the, not, end. the judge said we're not sure who did <laughs> <laughs> court adjourned <laughs> Now, is that where the big break comes? The big uh, break Now we get another, he never traveled heavy, always rode alone. Yeah. Uh, but he finally found a home underneath the Boot Hill grave that bears his name. Where is that? Where's the musical break? I want to talk about that. Is that oh, the, there? The musical break. That's what I'm talking about. The big break where it's, it's just what guy it's the sound of a guy lassoing something for like three minutes or whatever it is oh that i'm not sure about yeah yeah i think that's before one cold day of posse okay that's what i thought i wanted to talk about that before we get to the magic part that you hate the most <laughs> um, uh i like that part a lot it just that's a nice little piece of orchestration yeah and it's objectively it occurs to me now thinking about the song more it feels like billy joel is telling you the story he saw on saturday morning on some dumb western show uh-huh yeah now i bet you that's where the song comes from i bet it's some dumb actor we don't remember the name of or it's something ronald reagan was in <laughs> yeah that kind of thing yeah i bet that's what it is and then in that middle part that's where it's a state commercial yeah yeah i think that's just like you know we we get the information on billy the kid and then we have that long musical break where we're supposed to be picturing a montage yeah of him like peeking over the counter and robbing banks right <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, and I, and I, riding, I riding do, alone through the desert. That part's pretty damned effective, I would you say. Kind of, Just, yeah. Yeah, he kind of like, here's who he is. Now, please enjoy this weird musical break while yeah. you think about that. And then the musical break ends, and oh, one cold day, a posse captured. And you're like, oh, fuck, I was just enjoying him so much. <laughs> and now he's been captured by this posse. And they string him up. Uh, it's, yeah, it is like an act break in a TV show. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I like that part. And then, and then we get into this next ma magical bit. And I'm why don't why don't you talk us through this? Oh. <laughs> From a town known as Oyster Bay, Long Island. What's it really called? <laughs> it's known as Oyster Bay. If he's referring to himself, it's Hicksville. Um, or Hicksville Levittown, which was the first uh, designed suburb in the United States. Oh, I did not know that. That's fantastic. It is. It was the first. Uh, we're going to build a whole suburb with no takers and hope it fills up. And we're gonna redline it. <laughs> we're not gonna let any minorities in. Yeah. Um, but it was, you know, the picture on the album cover for Nylon Curtain uh, is basically what it looked like. It's identical homes and lawns and people. Uh, and Nylon Curtain is actually a slang term for the suburbs that never existed or caught on. Oh, funny. But, but you say, like, I'm going into the city and then I'm at night I'm going to drive home and I'll be behind the nylon curtain, baby. Oh, okay. So who used that expression? I don't know, but I don't know that anyone really used it or maybe it just was very short-lived or maybe that's what they called it in Long Island and nowhere else. But it is a reference to the suburbs. Okay. And uh, that whole album, I guess, is about how shitty it is living in the suburbs and how it's really not uh, a rosy picture. But uh, so he's not from Oyster Bay, Long Island. Um, I don't know how far that is from Hicksville. Yeah. Nothing's terribly far from anywhere. Right. But it's, it does fit uh, syllable wise. <laughs> uh, 
rode a boy with a six pack in his hand. Not a gun. Not a gun, not a six gun, a six pack. Do you see what he did there? Yes. Oh. He could have said it was in his vest pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. Um, it is probably more historically accurate than the rest of the song. It's true. <laughs> That'd be my guess. Um, very easy to imagine. Uh, but then his daring life of crime made him a legend in his time. He goes back. Yeah. He, you fly around and you play the piano in different cities. And that's not a daring life of crime. Yeah. Um, but he's like, my legend is the same. <laughs> I'm uh, mythically equivalent to Billy the Kid because yeah. of my little piano songs. That, he is short. Yeah, Billy Joel is a short man. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think a bank teller when he came in to make a deposit or withdrawal would be <laughs> taken aback by his age and his size. And either way, when he was young or now, I was like, Jesus, how old are you, man? <laughs> it is it is jarring. You are weathered. <laughs> he is weathered, but you know what? I've been to the shows, and it's never less than three hours of constant yeah. rocking out. He's, yep. What is he, 75? He loves the hell out of music, which is great. It is he great. He likes what he does. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fun... You know what I like to? I like making fun of the sillier parts of him because I actually like him. And it's nice to have a celebrity like that, where the reason I'm the reason you can go, gosh, that's a really dumb rhyme. And it feels stupid, the vest pocket thing. Yeah. Is partly because he seems so knowable. Like he seems like a guy you could do that to in real life and go, hey, that's a Billy. The kid song's kind of stupid, right? And he'd go, yeah. And then he'd pay for beers. Yeah, I saw there was some interview where somebody asked him about uh, his least favorite songs and he listed a ton of them. <laughs> what was wrong with them and why they were stupid and how embarrassed he is. And he, I was, I was at some concert and he was asking for requests and somebody mentioned something from Cold Spring Harbor. And he's like, you bought that album? I owe you ten dollars. <laughs> like anybody here who bought that album, just call me after the show. I, I owe you ten dollars. It's garbage. Oh, that's fantastic. great. God bless. Yeah, it's very Long Island. Like they don't, you know, you're in LA, uh, and we both lived in places where the culture is to compliment each other nonstop, whether it's warranted or not. Sure. Uh, and that that's a really is good not, observation. It is not the culture in Long Island. You see what I just did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you teed me up. And I you said, complimented me. Uh, hey. But if it was Long Island, you would go, fuck your stupid observation. <laughs> Who do you fucking think you are? If you, you know, I think it's like uh, if you live in Long Island and you buy a new hat, you think to yourself, I like this hat. I'm in for a week of shit about my new, new hat. But then once it settles down, I can enjoy my hat. <laughs> or in LA, you buy a new hat, and you're like, oh man, people are gonna love my hat and they're gonna tell me how much they love my hat. Yeah. And but they don't. No. Nope. They're just liars. Uh, here's the best example from my life is I don't care what I do with my facial hair. Clearly. Someone, someone will compliment it. And there's you're never right. Yeah, I've done that because I I know that only thing I'm really doing is forgetting to shave. <laughs> sure, that's the big move I'm making. And you see this pathetic just. And sometimes I'll kid myself and I'll go, maybe it'll come in this time. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. How old are you? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it ain't coming in. And I'll I'll dream of a big beard. Of dreams where I've got a big Santa Claus beard. <laughs> I, uh, yes, I've had the same thing where people always compliment, like, whatever. I, I had a goatee for a while. I'm like, oh, cool. And then uh, a couple of months ago, at, when I was getting super bored in the pandemic, I shaved completely. 
And then I went to a Zoom meeting for work and no one spoke about it. And I thought, oh, I found one. I found a thing that won't get complimented. And what it is, is my actual face. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, a friend of mine, comic, he has a bit where he just talks about how if you've had a beard for a long time, don't ever shave because you're not going to be happy with what's underneath. It's so true. There's a reason you hit it in the first place. Yep. Trust, trust who you were. Yep. And the problem is, because this happens with my mustache, mustache is not as bad because mustache, this part doesn't get all hangy. Um, but this part, if you haven't seen that in a while then that part's gotten older while you weren't looking. Yeah. You developed, yeah. You will find some new, yeah. Gravity will, happened. Developed a jowl, you, you know, all that stuff. Oh, or yeah. I had a thing where I was like, oh, my beard is fuller than it used to be. Uh, and then when I shaved, I found out, like, oh, no, there's fat deposits there. Yeah. It isn't beard. <laughs> it's that my face got bigger, so my same beard looks more full now yeah <laughs> oh my face is fuller never mind i've been growing my face out have you ever seen to tangent a little further uh adam sandler's impression of his dad coming out of the bathroom after shaving off his beard no it's amazing i think it's um, been his most recent special I watched uh, that. I watched a live recording of one of those. I got to see that at the West Side Comedy Theater, and um, I'm not a giant fan of a lot of his movies or whatever. But mm -hmm. I remember when he was a stand-up before. Yeah. He became, I remember it fondly. Yeah, because I liked that he was silly. I really enjoyed the fact that there was a silly comic around. He was never, he wasn't ever sexist and sexist jokes. Fine. If you tell a great one, cool edge, he wasn't edgy. <laughs> he wasn't any of that stuff. He wasn't political. He was just real goofy. He did this joke once about, uh, I think it was a mouse taking some food from him and running in the refrigerator <laughs> like and he acted out the little parts and i'm like this is delightful but then of course he became huge and why would he continue doing that he's busy being rich and happy sure so when he comes out and does stand up i actually really enjoyed watching him do that live i really like that special it was really great yeah uh, yeah and it's great that he uh isn't talking about anything yeah it's he's talking it's about it's just fun he's talking about him being a jew talking about family stuff yeah silly songs really nice little jokes and then something that i don't know that everybody loved but i did i thought that the thing for his friend chris farley was amazing oh yeah unbelievable i thought you you know i'm like i know they were friends that wasn't a made-up thing so i'm like you earned that you got the right to lament the missing of your friend that didn't Absolutely. feel like too, too like syrupy to me I know some people hated it, but I think those are people who have decided to hate stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to be that guy anymore. I, you know, I think we've all been that guy, but that's not interesting to me to be mad about. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to do less of that. I'm so mad that you had a sincere relationship with your friend. Uh, maybe that's not the <laughs> yeah. stand maybe to take. I feel like your anger started before that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's a Long Island guy and he's a Oh, Oyster Bay, and he too is a legend in his time. And then I think we just go one more time in. He never traveled heavy. Right. He never traveled alone. And that's also a weird choice because now you're talking about yourself. I feel like it might have been saved, still kind of silly and dumb, saved if he uh -huh. made the chorus, changed it to be about him as well. I think that would have been an good idea but just keep going if you're gonna do it yeah instead of because he's clearly switching back to billy the kid at that right point. yeah yeah true yeah he would say you know i often travel heavy <laughs> yeah but i never, never. travel alone because you got road never rode alone yeah and i've had a lot of sweethearts out of my league <laughs> <laughs> uh 
And that married, was, huh? And he's married to like a teenage chef or something now? Or am I a few years behind? Uh, yeah, <laughs> he, he, that must be a part of his life that he has no regrets about. No, I think he's all right. I'm like, you, you did all the good, the things we all want to do. Who, who would not marry Christy Brinkley now? She's still beautiful. Yeah, I don't know. I think people are still marrying her. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's really been out of the news cycle, but I'm sure it's still going on. Yeah. I'm I sure. The uh, last one I heard about was a billionaire, I think. Yeah. He married a billionaire and then he died in a helicopter crash or something. I might be conflating. Okay. I, I'm, I'm sure she married someone with money. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> probably. It probably was not a busboy at a like a the comedy store. Because if that had happened, that'd be where that'd be actually newsworthy. But no. it was newsworthy enough that she married Billy Joel because he wasn't classically handsome. Yep. Remember the fucking uh, Us Weekly went crazy. Yeah. Like, but he's short. <laughs> like he's a short multimillionaire. But yeah, okay. Yeah, and she probably actually really did like his music and music people, ladies like musicians it's true i have people like musicians in general but oh man i've been in, in so many dumb shows where a guy played piano or a, had a tuba <laughs> yeah like, oh, okay i guess yeah the, the tuba guy's going home alone usually <laughs> he's, he's the only guy left somebody later you'll go home with him I, uh, I'm always amazed, like, I used to, I w we used to do shows with Graham Elwood a lot. You remember our friend Graham, of course. Of course. I used to do shows with Graham Elwood, and I was doing a show with Graham, and there was a lady there, a very cute mm -hmm. lady, Graham was mm -hmm. there at the time, and I made some comment about, like, well, people don't, people don't get phone numbers in real life, I said. And then I proceeded to see him get a phone number of this girl for no good reason, other than he's charming. Yes. And uh, I happened to then go on stage just shortly afterwards. And my whole opening bit, which did really was, I was like, so this is what happened. I told my friend that people don't get phone numbers. What I should have said is, I don't get phone numbers. <laughs> ah, you, you extrapolated incorrectly. <laughs> yes. It was very, it was troubling and revealing and i was like ah it's just good you got married early because you your options you weren't gonna have a lot of options you dummy <laughs> <laughs> well you fucking nailed it yeah i did i did 28 um, years later i have i think a decent trivia question mm. uh, okay oh yeah we I, have two, two parts. actually you can answer it this time all right I mean, the tradition is that I ask it and immediately answer it myself. <laughs> but <laughs> um, so on Billy Joel Studio, I said Wait, so far you've been a hundred percent. So of knowing your That's true. Yeah. I am the defending champion. <laughs> um, uh, there are three songs on all uh, Billy Joel Studio albums that are instrumentals and do not have lyrics or singing, can you name them? Wait, where's the camera? Where's my camera? Hmm. Can you name them? Ooh, I cannot. That's a great question. Zero of them? Titles? No. Wow. Yeah. All right, I well, I'm going to figure out what they are so I can answer it next week and go, hey, I figured it out. What well, I figured I'd just answer it myself. Or, well, let's see if you know. Let's see if I can remember. There's one called Nocturne. Okay. It's just a nice little piano piece. Um, there is one called The Root Beer Rag. Okay, is, I know that song. You know that ragtime piece? Yeah. Uh, which was also the name of his fan letter, his little fan newspaper back in the day. Uh, and then there is one called The Mexican Connection that is <laughs> offensive on the face of it. Yeah. And uh, musically, I think it's a little bit of uh, like, I'm going to try to sound like a uh, mariachi, but I just moved to LA, so I don't quite understand it. 
Right. Um, uh, none of those were charters, right? No. Okay. No. Maybe Root Beer Rag got some play yeah. somewhere. That doesn't happen much anymore, I don't think. Instrumental? Be, yeah. yeah. Instrumental would, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. What was a good number one instrumental? Um, that popcorn song? No, did that have lyrics? I don't remember. Mm. Oh, the little Spanish flea. Yes, I don't think that had lyrics, right? That did not have lyrics. Homer Simpson. Yeah, that, was, lyrics. that was like a Herb Alpert. Herb Alpert, yes, and the Tijuana Brass. You're right. Oh, yeah. Everyone's parents, if you're our age, everyone's yeah. parents have that album. And then the song that they eventually co-opted for Austin Powers um, oh. by the great producer. Phil Ramon? Phil Spector? No. <laughs> uh, these are good. No, what's his Ruben? No, black fella. Uh, Who? Quincy Jones, Quincy I'm being Jones told. Great Quincy Jones, yeah. Oh, what was that song called? My producer doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. You remember that popcorn song from when we were kids? Yeah, yeah that, I think that was a maybe a number one hit. Yeah. And that That's, was disco-ish, am I remembering right? It was disco-ish, yeah. That's right, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, there we go. <laughs> So that, that's a pretty good trivia question. And you got it again. So I got it again. So I'm three for three. Yeah. That means I come back next week. Exactly. I like the low pressure trivia contest we have where you ask and answer. That's nice for people. There's too much stress in, in the world. right? In now. these troubling times. Yeah. There's really. nothing like self trivia. Can you get a prize? No, but you get the answer immediately. So we won't, won't give you that. Tension and release is your prize. Yeah. Your trivia question, I was going to even say earlier that you blew a great trivia question by just saying it was about the um, first uh, on purpose built um, suburb. That was oh, yeah. The Hicksville Levittown complex. Yeah, that would have been great trivia. And I, I, and I don't know if you would have known it. <laughs> yeah, I might have stumped myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, I'm, I think I have a winner to talk about next week. Awesome. Because it is good and bad. And it is definitely has a timestamp on it. Miami 2017. Nice. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. I think it'll be fun. Nice little apocalypse yeah. scenario. Yeah. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, we'll try that one next time. That's, yeah, I'll enjoy talking <laughs> about that. Also, also on uh, Songs of the Attic. Uh, also on what? That is also from Songs from the Attic. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. One and only live album? No, first live album. Yeah. You know, the, the crazy thing too is if we decide to, this show can last a long time because this son of a gun wrote so much stuff so much stuff and none of it boring no a lot of it not great but none of it boring and then when we get to it i and i don't i'm not i don't know which of us is going to eventually pick it but when we get to scenes from an italian restaurant when we do in my opinion that song is genius i love that song <laughs> it I is pretty know. fantastic yeah, I love, I love the lyrics. I love the music. I love the fact that it's three songs. Yeah, I love that. You said, uh, "Meat Loafish inspired," and I think I said Beatles inspired, because it feels like oh, I'm sure both true. Yeah, I really like "Day in the Life" because it's two songs. So let's make it three songs. <laughs> What's the Meat Loaf song I'm thinking of? Is it "Paradise by the Dashboard Light"? Yeah, probably because that. So, I think there might be more than one that does the like three act operetta structure. 
Yeah, Meatloaf is like a tiny Billy Joel because he's got a couple really good songs and that's it. Right. He's done. And for some reason, he was just done, which is weird. Yeah, I don't know. He was even less likely uh, to be a rock star based on his physical appearance. True, yeah. Yeah, he's a he looked guy. like uh, an assistant roadie. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas Billy Joel could be like the head roadie. Uh, a little bit of trivia about Meatloaf, the assistant roadie. Do uh, you remember the movie he was in with Debbie Harry, what that was called? With Debbie Harry? Yeah, it's awful. Hey, Lord. No, I don't. Roadie. <laughs> it was in this movie called Roadie, and it's terrible. Wow. And Debbie Harry's in it, and some other famous singer, not actors. <laughs> Milo can act for sure, yeah. but Debbie Harry, no, no, not so much. <laughs> not too much. Oh, no. Yeah. All right. Something else. No one, no one was going to put her in a second movie, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's done enough for the world. I love Debbie Harry, always will. And I've, I've always said this too, as she gets older and weirder, she's more attractive than ever. Because yeah. now she seems like somebody who would make you breakfast. <laughs> nice or tell you to get your own fucking breakfast, which is yeah, also yes, attractive. That's true. For good quality. Yeah, I've also <laughs> thought she's the kind of person is if you got lucky enough and you were doing stuff with her of a physical nature, uh -huh. um, when you were close to the end, she'd go, you're not done yet. And you'd go, okay, I guess I got to do some more. <laughs> yeah, if that's your thing, I can see that being appealing. Kind of my thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, well, that's a trivia question uh, that I think I might have also been able to answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody who uh, has taken the time to listen and the one person who keeps making comments, which are great. Uh, he, the first one, he commented on the first episode and he said, I liked how it's a show about Billy Joel where you sometimes talk about Billy Joel. He said yeah. that. And then the second one, he goes, too much Billy Joel talk. Just <laughs> <laughs> ah, perfect. Well, we, maybe we found the sweet spot this time. Yeah which was the first 15 minutes, not on topic. <laughs> not on topic. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with, uh, I hope everyone's safe. That's all. Yeah, okay. yeah, I think they'll be safe. I think it's a good night. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too, and two people who don't think it's a good night, I'm not gonna bother you for a while, but at some point I'm gonna make fun of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's 